from the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time. Transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs, Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now, in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Tarzan and the Hooded Death. Tarzan had long since come to the conclusion that man was the cruelest of all the jungle creatures. And although the native tribe with whom he had spent the past few months had been friendly enough, it was good to be alone again. He wore a contented smile as he entered the clearing near his seacoast cabin. Suddenly, he stood motionless. From inside the cabin came the scent of man. He crept to the door noiselessly, and then he flung it open. Who's in here? I sense your presence behind that curtain. Step out into the room or I'll send an arrow through your heart. No. No, don't shoot, Nugu. Uh, a native boy. Who are you? What do you want? I am Nugu, and I mean no harm. I came only because I heard of Tarzan's magic. I have no magic. Nugu find much magic here. Small animals that hang on wall and do not move or make sound. A few simple pictures. Thin white bark bearing many strange bugs. <laughs> Printed books. Sitting mats with long legs like Twigger. Mats with legs like a giraffe? <laughs> oh, those are what the Tamangani called chairs. These things belong to my real parents, whom I never knew. They are strange to you, perhaps, but they're not magic. But Tarzan has much magic. Everywhere in the jungle, men speak of him. Nugu traveled many moons to find Tarzan. Nugu must learn Tarzan's big ufumu. Just why are you so anxious to learn about Tarzan's medicine? Well, Nugu is apprentice in school of witch doctor. So also is Galyema, son of uncle. One who learns most medicine will someday be Mutemi. So you want to be the emperor of your tribe, and you thought that... Uh, what, what is your tribe? Nugu cannot tell. You said you'd come many moons. Just where is your village? In the mountain country, near Nagomba. Near Nagomba? But that's hundreds of miles away. You... You made that trip all by yourself. Yes, Tarzan. My heart say Nugu must see Tarzan. How old are you, Nagu? Fourteen times has winter come since Nagu was born. Fourteen, hmm? Well, I can't send you back all that distance alone, nor have I the heart to let your trip be for nothing. I'll teach you a few things your competitor doesn't know, though it won't be magic, and then I'll take you home. That night, Tarzan taught Nagu a few things unknown to the jungle tribes. But early the next morning, while the instructions continued in the clearing in front of the cabin, the lessons came to an abrupt end. The scent of the Tamangani was in the air. Instinctively, Tarzan grasped the vine and swung himself up into the trees. The native boy stood alone in lost wonderment as two jungle-weary white men staggered from the brush and fell exhausted at his feet. You going, Joa? You are sick? Water. Just... Get water. Please. Nugu, get water. But first, white men take this powder. What? What is it? Yufumu, good medicine. Give to other white men, too. Nugu, get water now. Here. I have brought water. Tarzan. Nugu thought... Where did you get that medicine, Nugu? What is it? Always people of my tribe carry powerful medicine in gourd about their necks. It's made of strong herbs. Well, you'd better take it, strangers. Much of the black man's medicine is strong against the evils of the jungle. Here, here, I'll hold the water bag to your lips. And, uh, the water is good, but the medicine is bitter. Evil taste help chase away bad spirits. Here, Garvey, better take it. Nothing to lose in our condition. All right. Uh, we... We'll carry you inside now. Wait, 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 wait a minute. I, I don't think you have to carry me. This native medicine, it's miraculous. I feel almost normal again. 
Garvey. Yes, Doctor? How do you feel? I feel fine. I can't understand it. Neither can I. A lifetime in the medical profession, and I never... Son, what's in that medicine? Herbs. But which ones, I cannot tell. It is secret of my tribe. Well, we're certainly obliged to you for saving our lives. And you, sir. If we may, we'd like to rest for a while in your cabin. Uh, that is your cabin there? Yes, the cabin is mine. And you may rest until morning. Then you must be gone. Tarzan does not like the white men. But you're all white yourself. Your brown's from the sun. Look, Mr. Uh, uh, Tarzan, this is Dr. Cunningham. He's a very famous man. My name is Garvey. It's important that we accomplish the purpose of our safari, and it's important that we make it back to civilization. We're willing to pay you well for your help. I have no use for money here in the jungle. But someone has to help us. Our native porters and Ascari deserted us. We have heavy equipment that we cached a few miles back. If you won't help us, we haven't got a ghost of a chance ever getting out of this jungle alive. I have no wish for the death of any man, Mr. Garvey. But many times when the path of Tarzan has crossed that of the white man, he has found treachery and deceit. I did not invite you into my jungle. I do not feel any obligation to lead you out. Uh, just a minute, Tarzan. Yes, Dr. Cunningham? We've heard of you back in our country, and some of the stories of the unscrupulous men you've met have reached us, too. Now, believe me. We are not out to hurt you or any of your jungle friends. The tongues of the other white men also spoke softly. But I've always found that when bearers desert their buanas, they have good reason. I offer you a bed for the night. I do not offer to lead you back. Nor do I pretend friendship. We shall return to Tarzan in just a moment. The white men slept most of that day, but as Kuda, the sun, sank in the heavens, giving place to Goro, the moon, they were awakened by the delicious incense of mm. cooking meat. <sighs> oh, it's dark already. Hmm? You have slept many hours. Well, it's been several days since we slept last. You awake, Garvey? Yes, Dr. Cunningham. I guess that wonderful odor coming from a fireplace did the trick. Boy, I'm hungry as a bear. <laughs> the meat is cooked. I remembered that the white man likes his food ruined with fire. <laughs> you eat yours raw? I was raised by apes who know nothing of stoves or skillets. Oh, come, I have chairs pulled to the table in the manner of white men. Oh, thank you. Uh, where's the little uh, native boy? Yes, isn't he eating with us? <laughs> Nugu is much like me. One cannot keep track of the comings and goings of the savage. Perhaps he has already left for home. Oh, I thought he lived here with you. I have not occupied this cabin for many moons, and I found the boy when I returned yesterday... He disappeared early this afternoon after having examined everything about you and your clothing as you slept. Here. Eat. Mmm. Boy, does that smell good, huh, Doctor? Oh, it does indeed. Well, regardless of what tomorrow brings, we'll have one good meal in the jungle. Ah, uh, this is delicious. What animal is this, Tarzan? It is meat. And the milky-looking liquid within your gourd is pomba. It is a native beer made of corn. Well, all the comforts of home. To your health, gentlemen. Even though you've refused to help us in our mission and guide us back to civilization, Tarzan, we're still deeply in to you. I raise my gourd. Sounds like the native boy. A, a tiger! He must be after the lad. Tarzan, wait! I've got a rifle here and I can... But Tarzan waited neither for words nor for the help of the white man's thunder stick. He was out of the door and into the jungle clearing in one great leap. A hundred yards away, Nagu was running toward the cabin as fast as his thin legs would carry him. And behind him came a savage tiger, its great strides bringing it closer and closer to its prey. The boy increased his speed. He was going to get away. 
And then suddenly he tripped on a gnarled root of a tree. Help me, Tarzan! Help me! I will help! The boy tried valiantly to regain his feet, but the great beast was already upon him, his mammoth claws raking the young body, and his huge jaws opened wide to tear at the soft young throat. But before the mighty jaws could close, two steel corded hands interfered. Tarzan rolled Nagu out of the way with one foot, and his hands continued to stretch the jaws of the tiger further and further apart, until suddenly the enraged beast wrenched free and backed away from the lord of the jungle. But Tarzan was after his old enemy. He leaped upon him, and his razor-sharp hunting knife flashed into the air and then found its mark. Did you ever see anything like that in your life? Fantastic. Come on, Garvey. The boy's hurt. You can't do much without your instruments, Doctor. Look, my kit. There, by the boy. Well, how in the name of thunder did... Ah! I heard it in the jungle once before, Doctor. It's the cry of the victorious aboriginal ape. It came from the throat of our host, Tarzan. And now, the ruler bandage. Here you are, Doc. Nugu will live? Yes, Tarzan. It's miraculous, but the, there's nothing broken, and the wounds are only superficial. The medicine you put on the wounds, it will help? Scissors, please, Garvey. Here you are. Oh. Oh. Now you'll oh. be as good as new in a few days, oh. son. I know, it's painful. Yes, Tarzan, the medicine will help a great deal. It's called an antiseptic, and its job is to keep the wound clean. Ah, yes, that, that is important. In the forest, a lion's mate licks his wounds to keep away the great danger. What I can't figure out is how and why the kid got a hold of your kit, Dr. Cunningham. I think I can tell you that. You see, in your conversation, you spoke of having cached your supplies. You spoke also about the work of Dr. Cunningham. The boy seeks the medicine of the white man, so he followed your spore and found the kit. I guess that was about all he could carry. The rest are in heavy crates. But I trade a good deal of what's inside them for the secret of the medicine Nagu used on us this afternoon. Perhaps you will learn the secret of his medicine before you leave the jungle. I'm afraid there isn't much chance of that. Without help, we'll be lucky to reach the railhead alive. You shall have help in accomplishing the mission Mr. Garvey spoke of and in getting back to your own land. You shall have the help of Tarzan. What? What made you change your mind? The look on your face as you worked over a small, unimportant black boy. It was as gentle as that of a mother ape nursing her small Belu. Perhaps there are good white men, too. Tarzan offers you friendship. interruption did nothing to spoil my appetite. Very delicious, Tarzan, even if I don't know what I'm eating. It is the meat of a small rodent. I hesitated to tell you, for civilized people have strange taboos. (laughs) I'm afraid we're too hungry to have any prejudices at the moment. You know, when our porters deserted us, they took most of the food. I still can't understand that, Tarzan. They seemed friendly and satisfied, and then as soon as we reached the heart of the jungle... They deserted us while we slept. Without cause? Yeah, I'm afraid it was my fault. I hired them, and I didn't tell them what we were really after until the night before they left us. Uh, Garvey. I'm sorry, Doctor, but it seemed best at the time. What do you seek in the jungle? We're after snakes. Ah, then that is why your men fled. They were afraid. Yes, but they killed tigers and lions and elephants. How could they be afraid of a few snakes when we have all sorts of equipment to protect them? They are not afraid of the snakes. They are afraid of the wakayoka, the snake men. Snake men. They are all powerful over the natives. You might call them witch doctors, but they're much more than that. And only they can hunt for Hista, the snake. Yes, but we've come thousands of miles to get them. You see, Tarzan, Dr. Cunningham is a pathologist. That means he's trying to find new ways of curing sicknesses. For many years, he's been working on a serum to cure man's most dread disease. It's called cancer. I've had some success with the serum I compounded from the venom of snakes already in captivity. 
But I think I might be more successful if I could get venom from wild ringalls. I I do not know a snake by that name. But its popular name is the South African cobra. You can usually recognize it by its head. It sort of swells up when it gets ready to strike. Ah, yes, The yes. head resembles an evil-looking hood. Yes, I, I know the snake now. In the jungle, we call it the hooded death. Oh, and now that you know what I seek, I suppose you'll desert me like the others. I am Tarzan. I never break my word. I will go with you to the north country where this snake you call the cobra lives in great numbers. That's wonderful. Together we shall face the hooded death. And together, too, we shall brave the wrath of Wakayoka, the snake men. Nagoo's path home led in the same direction as that of the snake hunt. And when the boy's wounds had mended sufficiently, a small safari started for the mountain country to the north. Day after day and week after week, the tiny band of men triumphed over the tangled web of Africa's dark interior until finally the great mountain of the Nagomba country loomed on the horizon. Well, there she is. Yes. In her rocky caverns, we will find many cobras. Nugu knows much about snakes. The kind we're looking for, you'd better leave alone. Their jaws are small. They couldn't eat a man if they wanted to. But a tiny spray from their fangs can blind a man in an instant. And often death comes in a matter of minutes. After what we've been through these last few weeks, there's very little that can scare me. Ah, courage is often dangerous if it leads to carelessness. This is the most dangerous part of the jungle. If you don't mind my saying so, Tarzan, you don't seem to be taking any unusual precautions. You hardly look to the left or the right. (laughs) My nose looks. I can catch the scent of man or animals for miles, so long as the wind is not against me. I can't even feel the slightest breeze here. Is the wind against you now? No, and I smell no danger. Wait here. I'll cut a path for a little way. Certainly aren't any easy paths through here. The only paths through the jungles are those made by Tantor, the elephant, other large animals. Well, it's a cinch there aren't any around here, then. We are afraid of his stuff, a snake. Uh, It seems a little better up ahead here. I think we got... No need struggle, Tarzan. Our thongs hold you tight. Hold white men, too. Where... Where did all of you come from? We follow you many hours I, now. I caught no scent of man. This has never happened to me before. My tribe knows secrets of big medicine. Destroy scent. And your tribe has big medicine indeed. You need fear no enemies. Why do you hold Tarzan and his friends? Tarzan is traitor to jungle. Why do you say that? Kokoro knows. Tarzan lead white men to lair of snakes. Tarzan knows only Wakayoka hunt snakes. You are Wakayoka? Me, Kokoro, emperor of snake men. Come, follow me. What happened to Nagu? He escaped? I don't know. What will they do to us, Tarzan? Kokoro, tell White Witch Doctor what we do. We lead you to snakes. Great cave of cobras you seek. We put all you in cave and seal door. You have many snakes you want till you die. <laughs> that not belong. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll continue with Tarzan and the Hooded Death. If the men of Wakayoka were nothing else, they were men of their word. The cave to which they led Tarzan and the two white men was large and dank and filled with deadly cobras, every species and variation of the murderous reptiles that existed on the dark continent. Their carnal eyes gleamed in the torchlight of the processional that prodded its prisoners into the Stygian cave. And then a great rock slid into place, and the three prisoners were left in sable blackness. Well, I guess this is the end for all of us. If only our hands weren't bound. It wouldn't make any difference. I'm sorry I got you into this, Tarzan. If only my hands were free. I'm more worried about your legs. Garby and I have thick boots on, but for your bare legs... You'll be the first target. I'm going over by a wall and try to rub through the thongs. Well, you're better off here in the center. They'll keep to the sides for the most part. I can't think with my hands bound. Yeah, well, let them go, Doctor. What difference can it make now? Very little, I suppose. You think they know we're here? 
Yes, but they may not strike unless our motions frighten them. You know, it's funny. I keep thinking about that Kokoro, the emperor. Well, so do I. Oh, no, no, not that way. I meant that portion of his face to the left of his nose. It was hideous looking, all right. Yes, it's a basal cell carcinoma. Skin cancer? Uh-huh, and it's rather ironic that he'll die long before his time of a disease I might someday have conquered had I lived. You aren't dead yet, Dr. Cunningham. I rubbed through the thongs. Here, I'll, I'll cut yours with this sharp rock. There. Thank you. Turn around, Mr. Garvey. Right. There. Uh, oh, that feels better. But what now? Well, we'll have to feel along the walls to find if there's a crack somewhere. My arms are strong, and if I can find something to grasp, perhaps I can do a little digging or pushing. How about the rock at the entrance? I tried that. It's too heavy even for me. Well, let's go over the rest of the surface. Garvey, you start to the left of the entrance. I'll start from the right. Tarzan can explore from the point where he rubbed through his bonds. We know there are no snakes in that exact spot. I can see a little now that my eyes are getting used to the darkness. I can see quite well now. I'm more used to the darkness than people of the cities. Let's see what we can find. Smooth as glass over here. The same here. Smooth and slimy. I'm afraid it's no use. All of these walls are... Tarzan, watch out! One of them's coiling the strike. His hood's standing out. <coughs> He's caught the snake by the neck. Smash it against that rock again. It may not be dead. Oh, he's dead. The rest of them are beginning to stir now. If we stay perfectly quiet, perhaps we should... Quiet, quiet. Hey, what was that? Over there. It looks like a door and the rock is opening. Light is coming in. New group comes. New secret door of caves. We lead you out. Hurry up, then. In a second, they'll be on us. Go ahead, you go. We're following you. Are you all right, Doctor? Yes. yes. Watch out for that rock. Yeah, I saw it. Some of them are coming over this way. Here's door. Go ahead, Doctor. Darby, I'll pull the door shut, Nugu. Phew. Wouldn't like to go through that again. Oh. Just keep walking straight ahead. This heavy woods will give us some protection, but we aren't safe yet. Not while the snake men are about. You better take the lead, Tarzan. We'll follow you. Good. I'm afraid we'd better hunt for your cobras one at a time, Dr. Cunningham. It isn't safe to remain here. It's a pity, though. I saw some beautiful specimens. It breaks my heart to leave them. <laughs> at least our hearts are still beating. We can be thankful. Nagu, where did you come from? Nagu ran away from father to save friends. Your father? How'd you know about the secret door? Nagu, member of Wakayoka. One of the snake people. I thought that might have been the answer. That adds up, all right. That's why they didn't try to capture him. It also explains the medicine he used to revive you that first day. Only the Wakayoka know such secrets. Well, Nagu, I guess the... Where did he go? There, through the trees. He's headed back toward the cave. Well, he'll what? be killed! What in the devil does that little fool want to go back there for? We've got to save him! He's through the door already! If only we're in time! Look, coming out of the brush. Dozens of them. The snake men. Well, let me through. I've got to get through that door. Not going, Cave. But there's a little boy in there, one of your boys. He'll be killed. Not going. The goo. Come out of Cave. Me come. Me come out soon anyway. Why in the world did you go back in there? Juana Cunningham say break his heart to leave snakes. The goo go in to get some for him. Can you beat that? Now what? It's the native drums back in their village. Come, we hold Shorai. Shorai, what's that? He wants us to come back to the village for a conclave. Are we to understand, Kokoro, that we are no longer prisoners? We decide to set you free before Nugu run away. But why? White witch doctors and great Buana of jungle unharmed by hooded death. Means snakes know you have great medicine. Now you honored guests of Kokoro, Emperor Wakayoka... And of Nugu, his son, who will one day be Mutemi. His son? Well, can you beat that? Nugu tell father about white man's medicine put on wounds. How Tarzan saved Nugu from tiger. Not to mention the fact that he was ready to go back into that hideous cave to save you from the snakes. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you laugh, Kokoro? Snakes not harm Nugu. He of royal snake blood. 
From day he born, he is rubbed with leaves of Yaradumio tree. And Makalia, a great Ufumu, is put into veins of small body. No snake can hurt Wakayoka. I don't know why, but I believe every word he says. You believe? In days to come, Kokoro will prove. You not know when starting into cave to save Nagu, he could not be harmed. You risk life for my son, Kokoro, now your brother. Kokoro? If you were to get me some venom from the fangs of a cobra, I might be able to prove myself a brother to you by treating that sore upon your face. So, my medicine not help that. Kokoro, get you snakes all you want. We will trade our knowledge. You teach me white man's medicine. I tell you secrets, jungle roots and herbs. And when you're through trading information? Then Kokoro's men lead doctor and friend to railhead. Mutemi has spoken, Tarzan. Mutemi speaks wisely. Would that all the men of the world could meet and exchange knowledge for good instead of exchanging spears of war. We'll return to tell you about the next story of Tarzan in just a moment. In our next story, we relate the experiences of Tarzan and the Manuema. The Manuema, one of the deadliest tribes of the Dark Continent. Men whose savage faces are painted with violent pigments, whose bodies are decorated with macabre souvenirs of their victims, and whose teeth are filed to sharp points so that they can more easily tear into the flesh of their favorite food, man. Tarzan, a transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced and directed by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Commodore production.